we have a new area to watch in the tropical Atlantic. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas. And in this video, we are going to talk about those development chances. We could have our next storm already as we get into early next week. We're going to break down those chances for you. In addition to that, we also have a pretty hefty plume of Saharan dust entering the Caribbean as we speak on the southern end of the Caribbean islands towards the Windward Islands as well. In addition, this is going to be out ahead to any tropical disturbance that does develop next week. We're also going to be talking about some pretty heavy rain, especially towards Trinidad and Tobago and the Windward Islands. We are going to break all of that down. Hey, before we get into the video, of course, it is hurricane season. If you want to stay up to date on all things tropical weather, all things weather in general, you have to hit subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up if you do find this content helpful. It really does help us out a lot. All right, jumping right into it. Here is the new area. Now, again, the percentage is low because in all likelihood, we're going to have that development towards the back end or beyond of this seven day stretch. So here we go with our little tropical wave that is getting ready to emerge off the coast of Africa. It will do so later on Thursday, June 16th or into early Friday, June 16th. And it's going to be in this yellow area. If it does develop in this area, it is going to be in rare company for the month of June. I'm going to talk about more on that, why that is in just a second, but it's likely going to be in this area. So again, we have a long way to go. We have a lot of time to watch this thing, but again, this is going to be an early heads up for the Caribbean islands, Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. And then of course the leeward and windward islands. Again, just something to keep in the back of your mind that there's something out there that could materialize over the next seven to 10 days. We're going to break all that stuff down. Uh, show you some model runs on that as well. Closer look at the disturbance itself. Again, this thing is just getting going. It's not even fully off the coast of Africa. Again, this is a really weird spot to have tropical development in June. Typically, we're looking towards the Western Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, off the southeast corner of the U.S., and we're really looking to where we would typically see things develop in the month of August and September, the Cabo Verde season. But there we go with that tropical wave getting ready to emerge off the coast of Africa. So I want to show you the European model first, and then we're going to get into some ensembles. And I'll break down what ensemble models are in just one second. But we're basically looking for this little ball, and I'm going to have it highlighted for you in this red circle. So here we go as we fast forward to June 18th, so a few days from now. There is our little ball of energy. Again, it's still trying to get itself together. We're really looking for that consolidated picture. Now, here we go. June 21st, the brighter the color and the more of a ball shape it is, this is the model spin. So this is the spin a couple thousand feet above your head here. And it gives us a good indication of what we have going on in terms of that low level center. But you see that right there, trying to get its act together as it approaches the leeward and windward islands. And then eventually, at least according to the Euro, now this is not gospel, but I'm just showing you this model run here. It looks like it could enter the Eastern Caribbean, close to the leeward windward islands, and then through Puerto Rico. That's going to be towards that June 21st to June 25th ballpark. So again, this is something that certainly piques the interest at this point. I want to stress, though. Just be careful of what you see on social media. Don't pay attention to one model run. Anytime you see a model suggesting something like this, you have to do some bigger inspection. And that is exactly what we are going to do right here. So what I'm showing you here, this is on weathernerds.org. It's a great site if you are a weather nerd and like to pay attention to some of the model guidance, a lot of satellite things on here. So great website, check it out. But what we're going to do now is look at the European, and then I'm going to show you the GFS ensembles. So you look to see for, at least in this picture that I'm showing you, a bunch of L's in an ensemble to kind of, since we don't really have the entire picture here, we don't have Hurricane Hunter aircraft out there sampling the environment. What an ensemble does, it puts in different initial environmental conditions into the model and then gives several different solutions within the main model. So this is the European and then its members are kind of hinting at development. So when you see a big cluster like this, again, same model, but different initial conditions in the separate member, when you see a bunch of L's like this together, that means even with different initial conditions, we are still getting a very similar output. So it raises confidence that we are in fact going to have development somewhere in the main development region of the tropical Atlantic sometime next week so now we're looking at the evening of june 21st and we do have a bunch of those l's 
again, looking towards the Caribbean. You see that right there, again, entering somewhere towards the Leeward Islands, the Northeast Caribbean towards Puerto Rico as we get into that 21st to 25th time frame. There it goes again with uh, more of those L's kind of pushing up towards Puerto Rico. So that is the European ensembles, again, with those different initial conditions tuned in. The GFS, pay no attention to all this other junk that's off the Atlantic coast and off the Western Caribbean. It tells the same kind of story. There are a bunch of the GFS, the American model members on board, hinting at tropical development, at least some kind of disturbance working towards the Leeward and Windward Islands toward June 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and then potentially towards Puerto Rico as we get further in time towards the 24th and 25th. So again, it's something to watch. It's still not written in stone. We still have a few obstacles for this to overcome. The overall environment does look pretty healthy, but I mentioned about dust, and we're going to break down the dust forecast in just one second if you happen to be looking for that. But there's a lot of dry, dusty air in its way, so it's not like this is going to be completely unimpeded. This is not like it's going to be a behemoth system, and I'll go back to the to the other thing to show you there's also the the pressure it has what it thinks the pressure could be and it's important to note here that there's nothing incredibly strong at least on this ensemble getting into the eastern caribbean there is the strongest member that i've seen down to 998 millibars again the lower the pressure the stronger the storm so i mean we could have a decent tropical storm there at least again as suggested by that one ensemble the point I'm trying to make is that we do have consensus for development, but it's not going to be unimpeded. You see all these orange on your screen. This is the dry air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Again, the storm's going to be rolling off somewhere in this ballpark, and it's going to be coming through kind of like this. And if that model trajectory is correct, it's going to be somewhere in this area in a few days. Well, it's going to be meeting up with some dry, dusty, stable air, so it's going to have a little bit of a battle on its hands, even though the overall environment is favorable. One of the things making this a favorable environment, we've talked about this in a previous video about the emergence of El Nino later on this summer, at least while we're in El Nino, but the strengthening to a strong El Nino later on this hurricane season, that battle between that very warm ocean water. And we alluded to this, that if we got something going early before a very strong El Nino kind of took over, we might be able to get something out in this realm. And that's exactly, unfortunately, what's happening. Look at these water temperatures. You need about 80 degrees to be able to maintain and have a tropical system strengthen. And we are plenty warm in this region. Look at this, even way up here, we're talking 83 degrees. The storm itself is rolling off of Africa, just south of the Cabo Verde Islands. And look at that, everywhere you look here, we are well within the low to mid 80s. The Northeast Caribbean is blazing hot as well. So if it can get through some of that drier air, fight off a little bit of shear, although that is on the lower side, there is plenty of fuel for this storm to take advantage of. I mentioned earlier, okay, and the title and the thumbnail of this video suggests that this is going to be a rare storm. Here is why. So I want to overlay every single tropical system to develop in June since 1950. That is what is on your map. There are a lot of lines. Look at where there aren't a lot of lines, though. Since 1950, and really going back to the late 1800s, there have only been three known tropical systems to develop where the current highlight is from the National Hurricane Center. So if we do get a tropical system to develop, this would only be one of about really less than a handful of storms to develop in this region. So that storm developing in the main development region, what is what we call the area in between the Lesser Antilles and the Cabo Verde Islands, that's the main development region, is super, super rare. And that's exactly what we could have happen. And again, we have a lot of model guidance suggesting that you clearly see where the typical tracks are for tropical systems in June, and that is going to be in the Western Caribbean, certainly in the Gulf of Mexico, and then off of the Southeast Atlantic coast. So this would be really atypical and really rare for that to happen. But again, there's 
a lot of model guidance suggesting it, and the environment is also looking conducive to support a developing tropical system. One thing I mentioned again, we showed you this on the water vapor imagery, but here is a kind of a better look here. Uh, we have the channel of the satellite over the dust, and there is a lot of dust out there. There hasn't been a ton so far this season. It's been kind of abnormally low, although we did have a pretty dense plume come through the Caribbean last week. But there we go towards the Cabo Verde Islands and then into the Leeward Windward Islands and back over Puerto Rico and then back towards the Amazon. Again, that's one of the good calling cards of the Saharan dust that helps to fertilize the Amazon. I do want to kind of put this in motion. While we are going to have the potential for that tropical system to enter the Caribbean as we get towards the 21st through the 25th, again, in that ballpark, depending upon where you may be watching from, there's also going to be really the first round of dust so far this season, really getting close to the United States mainland. There it is towards the Yucatan Peninsula into western Cuba and then into southwest Florida, that kind of pinwheels up. It kind of dissipates a little bit, but I think it might be enough to enhance the sunrises and sunsets in our sky again in about a week or so. Just want to give you a little closer look to home that there is really nothing to write home about. We do have thunderstorms. I mentioned this in an earlier video as well that we would be watching right down here for these thunderstorms that are developing right along the intertropical convergence zone to see if we could get something to develop. Right now, there's nothing hinting that we are going to have development right before it gets towards Panama or Costa Rica. But nonetheless, uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, we are going to have those uh, bigger thunderstorms in the mix, non-tropically related, but those tropical rain, if you will, uh, as a result of those thunderstorms rolling off the coast of South America. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, we got you covered. If you do want to stay updated on all things tropical weather, all things hurricane season 2023, please hit subscribe. If you hit that alert bell, you'll be alerted to any time we post new content. Again, we've got our eyes on that one. We will certainly keep you posted for our friends in the Leeward and Windward Islands and all the Caribbean islands. And of course, watching it all for the Southeast United States, if it doesn't tend to turn, that could be an issue later on in about the next seven to ten days so the point is there's a lot of time to watch we got you covered hit that thumbs up if you found this video useful and helpful and we will catch you next time